everyone. This video has been two and a half weeks in the making, and I'm super excited to show you uh, what I'm about to show you. Um, but before I get to it, I want to remind you all that every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time, I host the Cortex Users Group. Uh, it's basically an opportunity for all of you to talk with the rest of you, people who are thinking about using Cortex, already using Cortex, have questions about Cortex, uh, to ask each other, to ask me, uh, and to learn about um, what's coming next in Cortex. So deeper dives like what you're about to see in, in the rest of this video. Um, I'm actually recording this on a Tuesday, which is obviously after the Cortex users group happened. And I'll say that in today's user group, I demoed a lot of stuff that uh, that I've done over the last uh, couple weeks, months, um, since uh, 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 since a lot of the folks uh, showed up uh, last to the Cortex users group. Um, a lot of stuff that I've shown in videos here, uh, and in some cases, um, some things that just didn't make it into videos, uh, things that weren't necessarily um, significant enough on their own, uh, but in the in the specific story that made sense to these folks, uh, they you know they they do make a difference. Um, so I highly recommend coming, checking that out. You can uh, get an invite to that by following the link, one of the many links in the video description. Um, down there, you'll you'll also find links to the demo site that I'll actually be demoing from in just a second, uh, as well as documentation, ways to get in touch with me, schedule some time with me. Um, there's nothing I enjoy more than seeing Cortex running on your data and seeing the unique ways that you're, you have been using ShareWell and making sure that Cortex will work uh, for you with your specific configuration. Um, so if you want to send me a structured lookup czar, a structure only czar, or just set some time to uh, get Cortex running on your machines, um, let's do it. I enjoy it. I enjoy talking to you all. I enjoy learning more about the community. And uh, it, it's just fun. I, what more is there to say? I just enjoy doing it. Okay, so with that being said, uh, I'm going to switch over to the demo screen and let's make this a little bit bigger. And hopefully my cat won't take out my, my demo system while I'm demoing. Um, he seems particularly interested in my computer today. Um, but what I want to talk about is external connections. Um, and specifically, um, the often heralded loopback connection. Um, Lots of you have a connection in your systems that is set up as an external connection, uh, but it actually just talks back to the ShareWell database. Um, that's not the only use case for external connections. You might have connections out to other systems, and that's fine too. Right now, we only support SQL Server connections uh, specifically for this loopback use case, though, of course, any SQL connection. SQL Server connection will work. So I have a supporting object that I just added to my system. I called it ShareWell Security Group. I decided to give it a nice name. The internal name is something ugly like Lookup Trevor Shea Sec Group um, because it's just a loopback connection to the ShareWell database uh, and specifically the Trevor Shea Sec Group table. Uh, this is one that I've seen in, in a few databases uh, that, that's been used as a, as a uh, loopback table. Um, now, obviously, that's stored internally to ShareWell. The connection string is encrypted uh, in some ways. I can't get that out. And even if I could, um, it's not necessarily going to be right, right? Because obviously, the once you've moved off of ShareWell, your data is no longer going to be on the same server. So any connections that reference that original server uh, name and database are going to be inaccurate. So we needed some way to kind of override them. So we've added this external connections tab over here. And you can see Cortex has already picked up that I have an external connection called loopback. 
Uh, it has the def ID. Um, and it's never been modified. What that means is that I haven't configured it. So if I go ahead and edit it, this is the connection string that's internal to Sharewell that Sharewell has been using to connect to this, this, uh, this database. Um, and in my case, this is in fact the database that uh, everything is running on. So most of this is accurate, uh, but in your case, all of this is probably going to be inaccurate, right? You're going to need to change data source to the name of the machine uh, that you're hosting uh, your Sharewell data on. Uh, you, you know, this, the the archive, the the actual data that you want to connect to. Uh, so if this is in fact a loopback connection, this would be, you could basically drop in as the connection string here, the exact same connection string that you set up Cortex uh, with. And in fact, uh, in a future iteration of this, I might uh, change this to have a checkbox where I can just say, you know what, this is a loopback connection, use the same connection string or something along those lines. Um, there might be iterations on this on this uh, modal is, is what I'm saying, um, both to uh, improve the, the use case of it's a loopback connection and maybe make it easier to uh, to enter all the necessary information and indicate what the required information is. So obviously the machine it's running on, the name of the database you want to connect to. Uh, this just says I'm not using Windows authentication for the SQL connection. Uh, and then a user ID and a password. And this is encrypted in some Sharewell encrypted way. So that is not the actual password. Um, and then these things on the end were added by Sharewell. So these are definitely not going to be part of uh, a valid connection string. Um, you might recognize this as when you set up a, a Sharewell connection, uh, one of the questions is who is the database owner or what is the schema? That's what that is. Um, and this is an indicator inside of Sharewell to indicate that this password setting here is encrypted. Uh, this is just another internal shareable thing. So we're going to remove all of that. And uh, I'm going to replace this with the password. But real quick, I'm going to hide that from you all because I am actually putting a real password in here. I'm going to hit save. And now if I switch back to the screen, you see same connection name, same connection ID, but you'll notice it has a last modified date. Uh, this is UTC, um, so it's it's today at 3.24 a.m. Um, GMT, right? Um, and now if I go back to browse, go back to my supporting objects and find Sharewell Security Group, and I click on that, now I get the grid that I defined for this external business object, and I see listed out all of the Sherwell security groups. I can even drill into one of them and I see all of the def details uh, because this is, I, I just put together a super simple form for this demo. It's got the def name, the def alias and the def details. Great, nothing fancy. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, of course, if you're using uh, any of these tables in calculations, or on other um, business objects, uh, like another use case I saw was um, on incident, being able to show like the count of, of attachments somewhere on the form or something along those lines. Um, th those will work as well, uh, but only after you've uh, configured this connection. Uh, if you haven't configured this connection, everything that I just showed you um, just will return blank blank information. Um, actually going directly to the the grid um, might might break actually. Um, so so don't do that. Uh, but any calculations, any queries that involve those those business objects, um, they they just kind of short circuit and return empty collections, empty 
values, zeros, you know, whatever is appropriate for where they're being used, just so that everything else on the BizHub form works, uh, just that those, those queries aren't being fired off. Uh, and in that way, you can, for instance, choose to configure certain connections, say the loopback connection, but not maybe a connection to an external CMDB or something like that. Um, also, additionally, if you decide that you don't want to have this external connection configured anymore and you want to remove that, that linkage, um, the way to do that is to click this delete button. Sure, you could edit it, change it to you know bad values. Uh, the problem with that is that Cortex would assume that you have configured it to be a, a valid connection string and would try to connect and run queries and, and bad things would happen, things would break. Uh, so the best thing to do if you want to sever that connection is to just click this delete key. And you can see it doesn't actually delete the connection, but it removes the override. So again, we're not touching the sharewell data. Uh, this exists in its own little world um, so that we can do additional logic beyond what's contained in the sharewell data. Um, but we just remove the override and disable the connection. So I'll say yes, delete that. And now if I go ahead and hit that edit button, you can see we're back to the, the old scramble password. So I'm not uh, releasing things to the world. I, you know, um, you, you can't get access to my password. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Uh, so with that, we now support external connections, specifically to SQL Server connections. Um, and the specific use case is the this loopback connection. Uh, again, this means that uh, queries, calculations, expressions, all of that good stuff is supported on these external connections, these external business objects. Um, and that should help your, your biz ob forms look a lot more similar to what you, you what you what you were seeing in Sharewell. Um, so I'm excited about this. I had fun building it and just took a little bit longer than I than I uh, had hoped. Um, but it's in there now. Yes, there will probably be iterations on it. Uh, so let me know what could make it better. Uh, but at the very least, this will be going out in uh, 1.6. Um, this is live on the demo site. However, you'll notice I did just sever the connection. So you can't actually see it in action. You can see this screen. Sorry, I'm not sharing anymore. You can see that external connection screen. You can click the edit button. Um, you could change the connection string, though I don't know why you would. Um, but you can see it all in action. The only thing that won't work is obviously that particular external connection won't function in the rest of the system because I, I severed the connection. Um, so in a little bit, that'll actually be configured live for the long haul um, in a little more secure way. Uh, but for now, this is the way it is. Um, and since it since Cortex runs on on premises in your cloud on your systems, um, it's probably less of an issue um, that uh, some of this is a uh, is a little bit janky. Uh, because you're only going to be configuring it once, and it's in a relatively secure environment. Um, that said, I do want to make it better. So I did want to get this video out um, so that you all could see it, and you could all see it in action, and so that I could do some other cool stuff and demo that as well. Uh, so hopefully with this, uh, we are back to weekly updates, weekly videos of new features. Got a few queued up that... Uh, that should kind of fall like dominoes, that should all happen rapid fire. Um, and I might be able to queue up a few videos. Who knows, maybe one of these weeks there'll be two or even three uh, videos in a week. Either way, that's today's video. Um, remember, if you haven't been to a, a, well, a Cortex users group, check that out. Again, link down in the video description. If you like this video, all that good YouTube stuff, the thumbs up, the subscribe, all that sort of thing. If you want to book time with me, 
information down in the video description as well. I look forward to seeing Cortex running on your data and uh, I'll see you in the next video.